The next presentation will likely provide new information for most of you regarding the Family Forest Network. Daniel Hart is a forest technician and the Extension Forest Professional with the Family Forest Network. Daniel attended the Forestry Technician Program through Stanford Fleming College in Lindsay, Ontario, graduating in 2013. He had a number of interesting and challenging number of uh, responsibilities while working for government and industry, such as timber cruising, road and block layouts, sample plot data gathering, lumber mill planning, and operations. Daniel has liaised with Indigenous communities, government bodies, and members of the community about harvest plans and operations. After being displaced by a, a wildfire in 2016, Daniel made his way back to Fort McMurray, taking on a job as tree clearing supervisor for a mine expansion operation under Sinthrude, Canada. Like many of us before him, Daniel and his wife moved back east to God's country to live. He became a member of the Family Forest Network team in August of 2022. This team has been working hard to build an organization that conducts research and educates others on ecological forest practices. And they provide assistance to small private woodland owners like ourselves. The title of Daniel's presentation is Forests Are More Than Fiber, an update on the Family Forest Network's ecological forest forestry project. Welcome, Daniel. So as introduced, I am a forest technician working as a professional uh, extension forest professional with the Family Forest Network of Nova Scotia. Uh, today I plan on covering the outline of the project, our rationale, the network, natural disturbance regimes, the pilot, and how can you all participate. If there's time for questions after, we can ask some questions. If not, I'll be out by the entrance and we can stop by and ask me that. So the project. Over the next four years, FFM will conduct a large-scale pilot of ecological forestry on about 150 woodlots through Nova Scotia. In late September 2021, the Forestry Innovation Transition Trust, or FIT, awarded FFM a total of $9.8 million for the pilot and associated activities. The pilot will quantify the economic and environmental costs and benefits of forestry based <coughs> of forestry based on natural disturbance regimes and develop recommendations for conducting ecologically sensitive management on small woodlands across a range of forest conditions. The project will work only with willing landowners who volunteer to participate. Forest stands to be included and the research must meet rigorous site selection criteria. That's one thing we are currently looking at, the different vegetation types that will be acceptable within the project. Uh, there will also be a minimum size, as our, our, the sites we will be including in the project, we plan to implement a control area. That control area would be one hectare in size, with a 25 meter buffer around it, and that would be untouched, whereas the rest of the area would be treated. That way we can look at the conditions between the two and return to them at a later date and see how and treated area responded first and untreated area. A rationale. With the techniques of ecological forestry have been the focus of numerous research studies over more than 30 years. There has been no large scale pilot in Nova Scotia that assesses the costs and benefits of ecological sensitive management forestry. This research project will study not only the short term economics of ecological forestry, but also the long-term impacts of forest value, carbon storage, soil nutrients, biodiversity, and other non-timber values. <coughs> the network. So Family Forest Network works with 10 organizations that serve small woodland owners that are working together to help develop what we call the Family Forest Network. Many of them are actually here today. Uh, CMM, CFI, uh, MTRI, NSWWT, uh, as well as FNSWO and NSCC, the name of you, and APO. Natural disturbance regimes. 
Key findings on macro disturbance in the Wabanaki Acadian Forest. The average gap size in pre-settlement forest was no larger than 0.1 hectare. The average area of forest disturbed annually was 1%. If the goal is to emulate most northeastern natural disturbance regimes faithfully, then the majority of the landscape must be under some type of continuous canopy, multi-gauge silviculture, that maintains ecologically mature structures at a finely patterned scale. Our analysis suggests that NDBS, the Natural Disturbance Based Silviculture Systems, are capable of sustaining a greater diversity in forest structure and composition while producing volume yields and financial returns that are competitive with conventional, even and uneven age civil culture systems. <coughs> For this research, Ecological Forestry aims to promote the restoration of stands to climax forest types appropriate for each parcel's vegetation, soil types, and ecosites. Consistent with Alec and Damato, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, we intend to treat forests in ways that are better, that bring them closer. <clears throat> in structure, function, and composition to healthy natural forests at all stages of successional development. The goals are to build diversity and resilience, ensure ecological integrity, and mitigate the impacts of climate change. To help determine appropriate prescriptions and successional pathways, the project will be rooted in existing NSDNRR publication and protocols. For example, the SGEM, FEC manual, nutrient budget manual, as well as PTAs and other assessments. Adapted to small within context. We will focus mainly on applying a mix of irregular gap and continuous cover shelter wood treatments on sites dominated by early successional species. Robust data collection, pre and post harvest, timber, biodiversity, carbon, and soil nutrients will, will be standardized through the proprietary data management app, compatible with the new NSDNR uh, protocols. So through our partners, NGRI, we will be conducting biodiversity assessments. And with our partner CFI, we are doing carbon assessments. And we are also doing PTA pre-treatment assessments. We then plan to return to these areas to do the same assessments to determine how well uh, an area has responded to treatment. Determining acceptable and unacceptable growing stock, AGS and UGS, can be very subjective, especially in restoration contexts. Instead of trying to redefine these terms to better account for non-economic values, we are considering whether to adopt a new category for ecological growing stock, or EGS. This designation could be used for trees that are desirable for retention but do not fit the standard definition. Uh, standard definition for AGS. For example, a long-lived shade tolerant tree that doesn't have saw log potential but would be important sea source. Trees with high wildlife value, like a mass producer, wolf trees, or large diameter trees that soon may become snags or non-commercial species that are kept purely for diversity. For this project, maintaining or restoring natural diversity is critically important. So how can you participate? Because this is at the heart of a research project, each forested parcel that will be studied must meet clearly defined criteria related to forest types and conditions. Some parcels will not qualify. If you are interested in exploring whether your land is eligible, you can talk, contact myself, Daniel Hart, at my email is up there, danielhart.ffn at gmail.com, or our other extension professional forester, Ryan Dickey, at dickey.ffn at gmail.com. The Family Forest Network partners will begin talking with landowners, contractors, and forest professionals this spring. You can sign up for more information at nswoods.ca slash family forest network. There is time for questions.